Welcome to our new segment called Where Can This Degree Take You? We'll bash out a few of these, but I wanted to start with my personal favorite, and yes, I am biased, geology. Geology is more than just a collection of puns. Yes, geology rocks. Knowing all these different types of rocks is nice. I mean, who doesn't love a good puns? Yeah, that's not funny. Thanks to popular media, you might have been inspired to be a geologist by characters like Randy, you're working on that sediment analysis? Not now, Nelson. Or Piers Brosnan in Dante's Peak. Or maybe you just have an overwhelming urge to prove Sheldon wrong. Kim Kardashian is a billionaire, so there are worse comparisons. But let's discuss what this piece of paper can get you. Geos are found in both government and private institutes. Government institutes will hire geos to plan and evaluate excavations, construction sites, natural disaster preparedness, and natural resources. Or rather, they should. There are many instances where this process was not followed and then we end up with whole towns built on grounds that are less than exemplary geological settings, like dolomitic settings which could result in the formation of sinkholes. I won't mention any names, but Midrand, you know yourself. But where do you find most geos? No, not the bar. And no, not the unemployment line. Yes, most geologists find a home within the mining industry. You'll find them at multiple points of the mining value chain. At the very beginning, you get exploration geologists and geophysicists. I am covering these two together because they both have responsibilities at the very birth of a mine. An exploration geologist searches for mineral deposits to open up new mines or expand existing mine operations. The exploration geologist may also be expected to do valuations or feasibility assessments of what he finds. Alternatively, you can get an economic geologist to do those assessments. And if it's not clear, an economic geo's responsibilities are to locate profitable deposits of oil, gas, and minerals, then figure out how to extract them. This might sound a lot like an exploration geologist, but think of an exploration geo as someone who finds new deposits using geological knowledge, and then an economic geologist will study it and describe it to determine its value. Completing this pre-mining trifecta is the geophysicist. They study the earth using really cool tools like gravity, magnetic, electrical, and seismic methods. When companies use planes or drones to fly over an area and use remote sensing to determine what valuable deposits are below the surface, that's normally the geophysicist. They can be outdoors and hands-on or behind a PC modeling and calculating. If all things work out well, then a mine will eventually open. And when a mine is operational, there's a whole set of new geological roles that become applicable. First up, let's talk about production geologists or mining geologists, and with them will also include grade controllers. Some mines might separate these roles while others have them under one role. Responsibilities include, but are not limited to, planning, directing, and monitoring the movement of ore in the near future and in real time. You have to actively be involved in the mine, ensuring ore and waste are correctly demarcated and allocated. It's a process that deserves its own video, but I'm giving a basic of the understanding for now. You also get geotechnical engineers, and in some cases, that's just a geologist with a rock engineering certificate. They may also be called rock engineers. Again, while in some places those two are interchangeable, that's not always the case. These guys design and support stable excavations of rock. They continuously monitor slopes, uh, they ensure that we get our slopes as steep as possible while doing it as safely as possible. Remember, the steeper the slope, the less the stripping. Just one degree change of your slope could result in millions of rands. As a matter of fact, could result in millions of dollars. Some mines also employ structural geologists. These guys study rock deformation on a small and large scale. Areas with folds and faults can trap oil and gas and some valuable minerals. On a mine, you also get geometallurgists. This is a word that is increasingly important nowadays, having been previously underappreciated. These geos combine geology, geostatistics, and metallurgy to create spatially or geologically based predictive models for mineral processing plants. So they answer the questions of how best to beneficiate ore. Then you also get project geologists. Now sometimes this is referring to exploration geologists, but in this case, I am referring to a geologist whose role it is to look within and outside the mining industry for technology solutions that would make the work of geologists easier or safer. This involved project, technology, innovation, and change management. Up next, we have geological modelers. Now, these are geos that create computerized representations of geophysical and geological observations. 
These models will include physical quantities of whatever it is the geologist is interested in. This field has major applications outside the mine too. Then we jump on to data geologists or data geologists. Now these are geos with some form of programming certification for whatever relevant program is used for specific data or data. The data can be borehole or any other form of geological data. Moving on to hydrogeologists or geohydrologists. These guys study groundwater. How it gets there, how it flows and how it interacts with surrounding soil and rock. These geos can use their knowledge to construct wells for drinking water and to investigate the quality of water. There are many more applications that knowledge can be used for. If water is not your liquid of choice, you also get petroleum geologists. You can apply geology to the exploration and production of oil and gas. In most good companies, the young geologist or the junior geologist or graduate geologist will get to rotate around some of these roles. So you might start out as an exploration geologist, then get exposure to work as a production geologist, then get exposure to geometallurgy, because ideally you want to give a young person an opportunity to see where they best fit in. Um, and then again, it goes without saying that when you move on to the more complex roles, such as the resource modeling, it makes sense to spend a little bit of time getting your hands dirty. So starting out as an exploration or production geo, uh, putting your time in and only after a while moving on to the more strategic roles. It wouldn't make sense for you to start out in a, tra in a strategic role if you haven't taken the time to understand some of the more, uh, I wouldn't say basic, but entry level uh, geology roles where you'll get a bit of training to understand what the geology of that particular mine is all about. Now I could never cover all the roles that are within a mine so if there's any roles that you can think of that are applicable within the mine for a geologist please include them in the comments uh, and anybody watching can go look there to see if there's anything that excites you that I didn't mention here. But let's move away from the mine. Where else do you get these wonderful specimens called geologists? Well, right where they originated. Some geos just stay in varsity and they choose to lecture. Like my good friend, Dr. Marvin Moreng, it's also the easiest way to get the good titles like doctor or professor. But if you feel like varsity is a little uh, below the radar for you, you could also find yourself working in a bank. When a small mining company is asking for a loan to open up a mine, someone needs to check the feasibility study with an understanding of what they're looking for. But because of how broad geo's knowledge is, places like the Bank of America use their geos to try and reduce greenhouse emissions. Now turning up the heat, you could always be a volcanologist. This is a geologist whose focus is on understanding the formation and eruptive activity of volcanoes. You might find yourself working near actual active volcanoes, so only pick this one if you're willing to pack up your bags and go find one. But if like me you hate the heat, you might choose to be a marine geologist and this is now where you study the ocean floor. And if that's still not cool enough for you, what about glacial geology or a glaciologist? Here you'd be studying glaciers and ice in the environment. Climate change needs a lot of these guys. Now if you're like me, you might be inspired by guys like Elon Musk who are always reaching for new frontiers. Well there's a geology field that could also get you on that first crew that goes through to Mars. It wouldn't hurt your chances to be a planetary geologist, or astrogeologist, or an exogeologist. I promise I'm not making these up. You'd basically be studying celestial bodies, whether it be fragments of the moon, or asteroids, uh, or yet in the future you might be the person that's first studying the lithology that we find on a new planet. If you're not particularly passionate about the future and you're more interested in the past, why not study paleogeology, where you'd become a paleontologist? This would be you studying the history of life through fossil records. The next hormonal lady is waiting to be found. And if you're a geologist that's also part of Generation Z, you might get to name it Lil Naledi. I apologize for the dad jokes. But if you're passionate about working with the police, you could also consider being a forensic geologist. This would require you to use your geological powers to answer questions raised by the legal system. Do you guys remember the geologist that was actually called to testify during the Oscar Pistorius trial? That was a version of forensic geology, and I know it's not something that we like to think about, it also left me a little bit shook. But speaking of shook, you could also study seismology. A seismologist studies waves passing through the earth from explosions, earthquakes or other sources. One of the main functions here is predicting when earthquakes will occur, and thus saving lives. Now this is definitely not all the jobs that you can get with a geology degree, but it's the most I could put together in this sort of platform. 
Uh, if you have any more ideas of other jobs that I've left out that you want to include, please just put them down in the comments. Um, I think one thing that's very important is with any of these, I would definitely advise that once you get your geology degree, you go on and get your honors. Because for you to be suitable for a lot of these for a lot of these roles, you'll also need that um, honors qualification. So, for example, an environmental geologist as well as a mining geologist might have the first or might have the same first, second, and third year, but it will be in the honors year that they start to specialize within something. Um, again, if you saw the last episode, that was also a geologist who in the honors year went on to do soil mechanics and that then landed her up in, in, in agriculture. So I think the opportunities are endless when you consider your postgraduate decisions very well. I think another important thing is that you need to consider geographically where you are. It doesn't make sense to study volcanology if you're in South Africa and will continue staying in South Africa because we don't have eruptions taking place every year or every 10 years for that matter. Um, I do also concede that we are a global nation now that's quite well connected so I'm not against you studying something that you know with the plans of in the future moving towards somewhere else so go on and study glaciology if you see yourself moving towards you know Antarctica or Canada or anywhere where ice uh, and studying or understanding that ice might be helpful by all means do you uh, but I think for today I want to thank you for watching watching all the way through I hope you enjoyed it and peace.